Okay, I tried to find stuff on Rand Paul at the uh, Republican candidate site, but they don't have anything. Okay, so the only thing I could do is go to his own campaign site, which is right here. If you look on issues, you can, it, as usual, the website is poorly designed. This is true for all of them, okay? You have to like hover there and then slowly move down and over to pick one. All right, so we'll just start here at the top, spending in debt. But the good news is that you don't have to mess with this thing again. You could just go here. And if you say, well, brain out, that's not the right font. Yeah, I've got the fonts overridden because, as usual, they don't care about the readability. See, this is gray. We don't want gray. It should be black and white or, you know, dark, really midnight blue on some kind of almost beige. Okay? They don't care about readability. And this is a really bad web design. Look, you can't move your cursor. You have to go down and over. So just fire whoever did his website. Wrong font color, wrong font style. I had to override the font style to be able to read it all. And then look at how gray all this is. This is very popular at Vimeo and not so much at YouTube, thank God. This is ridiculous, people. But I digress. Point is, now we're here at number one issue. See, look, oh, look oh, pain in the ass. Right there, spending in debt. Oh, uh, I'm concerned about our national debt. We're spending $7 million a minute. That's not helpful. Okay? What he's not telling you, and this is one reason to dislike him, but I can't say the other candidates are better, is that when you're going to elect a president today, you're only, when you start talking about economic issues and spending and debt, over 50% of the federal government budget you, there is non-negotiable. Over 50% of the budget is going to Social Security because they stole the money out of Social Security. It's going to Social Security, welfare programs, the military which we absolutely need now, obviously. And and you can't cut that. There's no cutting there available. So when he says, oh, we have to get ourselves out of debt, ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. I will work to balance our budget and cut spending in all areas. Okay. But you you the only areas he, got, he has to spend to cut spending is in like little tiny programs, which are like a couple million dollars here, a couple million dollars there. You're never gonna, you're never gonna win with this. The only way you're ever gonna win with this is you have to rewrite everything from the ground up, and that we really can't do because we're already too much in debt. All right, it's like being a hundred pounds overweight, and you're gonna cut out crackers. That's basically what his proposal here is. Okay? Just don't even pretend to talk about it. You can't do anything about the spending and the debt. Ain't going to happen. Okay? It's not your number one problem. It's going to go on being an issue so long as the country exists. And so long as the country exists, you don't have to pay it off. Just forget about it. You can't do anything about this. All right? Term limits. There shouldn't even be an issue. The fact that he's talking about it as an issue, just forget it. He's wrong there. It's not even an issue. Audit the Fed? The Fed's already subject to audit. Okay? Doesn't do any good. It's already subject. Healthcare. Now he's starting to talk about something that makes sense. Repeal Obamacare. Yeah. But all the candidates want to do that. They should do that. We're too far in debt. We should stop adding more government programs. That's the number one reason not to vote Democrat. They always want to add programs. So repeal Obamacare, yeah, he's right there. Immigration, 
secure the border but encourage legal immigration. Honey, so long as you're encouraging this, okay, then you can't do this. You're going to have to just close the borders and talk about it later. I mean, I don't actually agree with that proposal. It's, it's, it's a proposal that's being, you know, talked about by other candidates. I don't agree with securing the border we got other economic problems that are more severe. Make welfare harder to get would be one thing you can do. Make welfare harder to get so that the illegal aliens can't get it. That's all. Then they'll stop coming. You don't have to secure the border. Just make, you know, just make welfare harder to get. Period. Okay? Encourage legal, legal immigration? No. We don't need to do that. Until we can take care of our own, well, sorry, we don't want anybody else. And you say, well, but that goes against the founding fathers. Yes, the founding of the nation needed immigration. We're founded now for 200 years. Let's take care of our own first. Okay? If you got some particular skill that we don't already have in this country, and you're not a terrorist, we might talk to you. Otherwise, stay out. That's my position. Not his. Okay. Criminal justice reforms. That's not your provenance. The God, the federal, the president shouldn't have any policy about the criminal justice reforms at all. There's nothing to say about that. That's in the hand of the states. You got the U.S. Supreme Court. You got the FBI. You got the CIA and the DIA. Okay, fine, but that's not criminal justice system. The criminal justice system belongs to the states. Hello. Get out of this. You shouldn't be talking about it. Education? That shouldn't even be a government issue. There shouldn't be a Department of Education. Get rid of it. I don't care what his policy is. He's got one. Opposed to one-size-fits-all approach to education. Okay. That's about as close to a policy you should have. What you really should be saying is, let's get rid of it. We don't need a national policy on education. Let the states handle that. Social Security. Fix Social Security and save it for younger generations. He doesn't know squat about economics if he says that. You can't save Social Security for younger generations. It's the other way around. Just get rid of it. What happened was, is people paid into it and paid into it, and then the government, the federal government, took the money out and used it, and then stuck in an IOU, so that the Social Security, the you know, administration is just overhead plus a bunch of IOUs. Disband Social Security. That's what you got to do. Just get rid of it. Well, you can't, not quickly. So what you do is you find out what you owe and who are the people currently in the system and then have the younger generations not be in it. Have them have self-funding self or something. Have them set up their own IRAs. You don't save it for younger generations. But he doesn't understand Social Security. And if he doesn't understand Social Security, he shouldn't be president. Now, he only just got elected as a senator. For Kentucky, or a representative for Kentucky, he hasn't even really been in office. He's like Obama. He's got no experience. Keep this guy out. That's my promise. Keep the promise of keeping you out. You can't fix Social Security, and you can't save it for younger generations. That's why we have a debt. So he doesn't understand that his first issue about spending in debt is due to Social Security. And he wants to preserve the thing that created the debt. So I don't want this guy. Don't. He doesn't know. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So Social Security? Hi. We're going to keep the thing that's, that's kept us in debt and save it for future generations. Right. Where do they find these people that they run for office? Sanctity of life, and this is my number one reason to say no to this guy. Look at this. I strongly believe in the sanctity of life. 
I believe that life begins at conception. That abortion takes life. Honey, okay, fine. That's what you believe. You're, as President of the United States, you don't have a right to impose what you believe on the rest of the nation. I'm a Christian. I'm a very strong Christian. Some would call me a rabid Christian. But if I were President of the United States, that has absolutely nothing to do with anything. My beliefs do not have anything to do with running the country, and they should not. This is a country of many beliefs. My beliefs don't matter if I'm in charge. That's what he should be saying if he was a leader. He's not a leader. He's a jerk. I strongly believe in the sanctity of life. Either he's a liar and he's just trying to get your vote, or he has absolutely no idea what leadership even means. Okay? None. Zero. Your beliefs, jackass, don't matter. It's being a leader of a country where their beliefs matter, not yours. If you're going to lead a country, you have to be attuned to the beliefs of the country, not your own. When you're running a company or you're running a country, it's the same thing. Clearly, you don't know the difference, so you shouldn't be president. And the NSA spying. Why is this even on the list? Ending NSA spying? Seriously? All he wants is your vote. This is a cheap shot. Now let's go to the next thing. See, I know something about Social Security. I know something about taxes. This is what I do for a living for, what, 30 years now. I was on the hill when they were talking about amending Social Security. That's how come I know what I know that won't work. Okay? Rand Paul's tax plan would blow up the tax code and start over. First of all, that ain't going to happen. Okay? He wants, essentially, because all this stuff is just baloney, okay? That, that, that just isn't going to happen. Okay? What could happen is a flat tax of 14.5% on individuals and businesses. And he's saying eliminate the loopholes. Now, let me tell you something. I would be, if, if what he proposes were true, I would be out of a job. I would be very glad to be out of a job. I don't like having to spend my time using those loopholes to save my clients money. Are you with me on that part? I, I would like it if they adopted some kind of simplification of the tax code. Because the tax code is crazy. Absolutely crazy. I've been using my whole life. And I'm 62 now, so that's, what, 40 years. All right? But he's saying, well, I'm going to replace it with a low, broad-based flat tax of 14.5% on individuals and businesses. And businesses? And businesses? This is a man who knows nothing. Let me explain why. When you go to buy a can of tomatoes, some business made that can of tomatoes. And guess what? If the business has to pay a tax, the price to you of the can of tomatoes includes the tax the business pays. But you're already paying tax as an individual. But because the tax is also assessed on business, you're paying the business tax too. Okay, so he did not even understand basic economics. Broad-based tax of, if it just stopped there and said 14.5% on individuals and there was no business tax, the tax rate is still too high, but that's the right idea. Steve Forbes had a plan like that, only I think his tax was lower. Okay, on individuals. You don't tax businesses. Because the business has to pay the tax with the revenue they get from individual customers. So you restrict the tax to individuals. And then everybody benefits better. Because then the, the business can sell its goods at a lower price 
to the individuals who are therefore only paying the tax once. When you tax businesses, what you're really doing is taxing the individuals twice. So this guy's too dumb to live. He shouldn't even be dog catcher. Or he's just relying on somebody giving him bad advice. This tells you right away, do not vote for this man. He's too stupid to live. I would eliminate every special interest loophole. No, they're not special interest loopholes. The purpose of tax loopholes is to encourage you to spend your non-taxed money in certain places. So like if you get a charitable deduction, that encourages you to spend your money on charity. If you get a deduction for your mortgage, that encourages you to buy a house. You'll never be able to eliminate special interest loopholes because that stimulates certain parts of the economy by cutting taxes special. So you, you, he shouldn't get rid of all the loopholes. Some, yes. But which ones? I would have him get rid of my loophole. I make my money by selling pension plans. They're deductible. I can get my average client a half a million dollar deduction a year. So instead of paying taxes on a half million dollars, he puts it in his plan. The law allows that. The idea is that that money is sitting there invested until the guy retires. And then when he retires, of course, he's going to spend it because he won't have any current income to live on. And when he spends it, he's stimulating the economy. And while he invests it, he's also stimulating the economy because the investment money is going into something that somebody else is using to make a business. That's why special interest loopholes need to be here. So again, this guy's too dumb to live. He doesn't understand business at all. So everything he's saying to you is, hi, I'm just going to say whatever makes me get elected. He has no integrity and he has less sense. On top of that, this is the wrong tax rate. 14.5% is too high. The next year, the government will find a way to raise it to 15%. And then the next year, they'll raise it to 16 and 17 and 18. And if you don't have those loopholes, then you're actually going to be worse off than you are now. Okay? So no vote on this guy. He's crazy. He's, he's, he's too dumb to live. Okay, period. What else did I not check off? That's why this website is badly designed. Because the guy who's running for office is badly designed. Civil liberties? You're going to take a position on civil liberties? And you call that leadership? That shouldn't even be listed here. I'm not even going to look at it. I don't give a flip what you say about civil liberties. What do you say about Israel? Because God's going to punish you based on what you say in Israel. I'm proud to support Israel. Yeah? That's what he says. That's what he says here. But if you look at his interviews lately, you know what he proposes with regard to ISIS? He wants he wants the, the you know Iraq to defend itself. If they won't defend themselves, then we just leave the Middle East go. That we don't get involved there. That's not defending Israel. Israel is there. The Arabs either beat up each other or they beat up Israel. That's how they are. That's how they are as a people. That's how they've been for 2,000 years. Ain't going to change. Bible tells you that Ishmael will always be an ass of a man since, um, let's see, Moses was uh, 70, 99 years old, uh, 75 years old. 83, 83, I'm sorry. Moses was 83 when our boy Ishmael was born. Okay, Moses was born in what, 2060? Yeah, 20, I'm not Moses, Abraham. Abraham was born, I think, in um, 2060 BC. I've got it somewhere. Oh, I'll put it in the video description. Oh, here we go. Come on. This is what happens when you have only two gigabytes of RAM.
I'm making this on a machine with only two gigabytes of RAM, so it's kind of slow. Wrong task scheduler. I don't need that. Where is my... Okay, well, I'll put it in the video description. What the heck? All right, I got to put this in the video description. I don't, yeah, there we go. This is what I wanted. Sorry for the digression. I really hate stupidity, okay? I especially hate it in people who are running for office. And of course, I don't understand how they can run for office. All right, when was, here's Abraham. Abraham was born the year of the world, 1946, after Adam's fall, 2160. He got his covenant in 2060. That's why I was confused. 2160, okay, is when Abraham was born. Okay, so then 2160, 2160 B.C., 2160 minus 83 when he was 83 years old. So in 2077 B.C. is when Ishmael is born. And ever since then, the Arabs are going to be bad. That's Genesis 16, 12. Okay? This guy is not a supporter of Israel. He's just saying that to get Jewish votes. Because what he would do is, oh, I'm sorry, you're, you're Iraq, and your troops ran away from ISIS, so we're not going to have troops come in for you. We're not going to do anything. We're not going to help you. If you won't defend your own country, we won't help you. Now, that's normally a prudent position to take. Not so prudent when Israel is affected. This is a, his, his position is tantamount to, uh, what do you want to call it, abandoning Israel. So he doesn't stand with Israel. He's a liar. I knew there was something wrong with him, but I couldn't figure it out until I went through the issues. Veterans? Well, of course he's going to say, I support veterans. Sure, we must protect our veterans. Yeah, but you don't. See, this is all, this is all fuss talk. Let's provide for those who have worn the uniform. And your specific program is? Nothing. Just nice words. It is my strong belief that, that we must protect them. Duh! And your particular proposal is? Just a lot of nice words. That's what this guy is full of. Nice words. Okay? And then when push comes to shove, he doesn't have anything. And that because he can't think. This tax plan, blow up the tax code and start over. That won't happen. Can't happen. The whole government would fall apart if it did. Okay? Flat tax on businesses, which means that the code, the tax code now, is actually better than it would be under this guy. Because businesses can write off a lot of stuff. But if he eliminates the loopholes and taxes the business, you would have inflation, and you know what? A loaf of bread might cost you $10 under this guy. Hillary would be better than him. So before, when I made my video, I thought, well, you know, I don't have anything to say. I just don't like him. Well, I don't like him because he's an idiot. And if you disagree with that, tell me how. Peace out.